In this lesson, we're going to investigate neutralization. Acids and alkalis can cancel each other out. When you mix them together, they make a neutral solution. This is called neutralization. So neutralization. If you add too much acid to an alkali, it makes an acid liquid. If you add too little acid to an alkali, it stays an alkaline liquid. You can add the acid very slowly and a few drops at a time, and this makes it easier to judge exactly when it becomes neutral. Here's a couple of questions. What color is universal indicator when the solution is neutral? And the second question, what sort of reaction happens when an acid and an alkali are mixed? What do we call that type of reaction? Making us a neutral solution. You can use a special piece of science apparatus called a burette to neutralize an alkali very accurately. So the burette here is filled with an acid and the flask at the bottom has the alkali in it. You put a few drops of universal indicator into the alkali and it will turn a purplish color. That's telling you that it's a strong alkali with a pH value of about 13. You can then add some of the acid from the burette. There's a tap at the bottom of the burette and you just open it and the acid can drip into the alkali. As it does so, it starts to cancel out some of the alkali. It reacts with the alkali and it neutralizes it. When you've added the right amount, that is, it's now neutral, solution will turn green because universal indicator is green when a neutral solution. In this experiment, it appears to be about 25 centimeters cubed. As soon as you start to add a little more, then the solution will become alkaline. So the third diagram, a little bit more acid has been added and the pH in the flask has now gone to about six. It's become an acidic solution. You've added more acid and that's canceled out all of the alkali and we now have an acidic solution in the flask. Here's an interesting activity. It's called the rainbow neutralization. You do it by placing a crystal of washing soda at the bottom of a test tube. Carefully then you add some water, trying not to mix up the, uh, the washing soda and the water too much. And then you put a few drops of universal indicator in at the top. You carefully pour some acid onto the top of that and you're really careful not to shake the mixture. And if you leave it for a few days, you should be able to see a range of different colors being produced. The acid at the top and the alkali at the bottom. And in the middle, you're going to have some weak acid and weak alkali. You may even have some neutral solution. Let's have a go. Let's see how many colors we can spot. So how does it work? How did we manage to get this rainbow effect? Well, we had an alkali at the bottom, that was the washing soda. We had an acid at the top and the water allowed them to move through it. This is a process called diffusion and we'll be looking at diffusion later on when you're in year eight. But it means that the water isn't all stationary, it isn't all stopped. The particles in there are constantly moving and so the acid could move, the alkali could move, and we've now got some different levels where the acid is, where the alkali is, and perhaps even where there is a neutral solution. So here are the questions. What is the pH of the top part of the test tube? You can always go back and have another look. Question number four, what is the pH of the bottom part of the test tube? Again, go back and have a look. You can even compare it with your pH chart. And number five, which is the most alkaline part of the tube? Is it the top, is it the middle, is it the bottom? 
And finally, a summary. Acid and alkali can cancel each other out. When they react together, they neutralize each other. To neutralize an alkali, you must use exactly the right amount of acid. When you've finished copying down the notes, drawing your diagrams and answering all of the questions, can you please send me your notes in an email and I'll see you in the next lesson.